Um, my first question is, there have been significant security issues in MCPS in recent years, ranging from drug use to violence, trespassers, and pretty much everything in between. Uh, what do you see as the top security issues in MCPS currently, and what is the best way to handle it? And we are starting out with uh, Shebra Evans. So the, some of the top security issues, well, we um, need to ensure that we are able to put um, more alarms on our doors. Um, some of our students may go out of side doors, um, have some additional staff to be able to monitor the hallways. But I really think it's important to come upon um, the school system to try to do more to be able to build relationships with our students so we can really know who's in the school building, um, what some schools are doing a little bit different is having um, gatherings prior to um, school starting and in the very beginning of the school year to make our parents feel welcomed and our students to feel welcome to know that they have a safe space and place and adults to be able to turn to. I think that will make a difference as well. Um, what we have seen is that some of the issues in the um, the, the community has been coming into the school buildings, but doing more on our end to ensure that there's safety and security for our students, um, such as badges to be acknowledged. Thank you, uh, Lynn Harris. Okay. Um, yes, you know our schools are microcosms of the community that we that we live in, and so. What we're seeing in our students is mirroring what we're seeing outside of our schools. And I think one of the important things we need to be doing in schools is ensure is building connections with our students and making sure they feel welcome and they feel valued and they feel seen. And if they they have a trusted adult that they can go to if they need any form of support anytime, that the protective value of one trusted adult is huge. But we also need to build stronger partnerships with our, our positive youth development and street outreach network partners at DHHS because their bread and butter is being out in the community where so many of the issues that end up erupting in our schools are having their origins. And their expertise is in identifying sources of conflict, diffusing them, helping people um, heal from conflict, atone. And if we can deflect, if we can in conflict before it comes into our schools. That's the best thing. Thank you. Uh, one sec, sorry, just lost my notes. Uh, who's next? Uh, Rita, Rita Montori. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for this important question. Um, from insecure doors to lack of security cameras to hate bias, anti-Blackness, anti-Muslim hate, anti-Semitism to weapons, it's really hard to just pick one. Um, I know parents and families who are already concerned about their children going to the middle and high schools because of the incidents that come out and the fears that they have, even including on the buses. So I think that we definitely need to focus here. I'm happy to hear that our new superintendent is making this a focus. Um, we need to make sure that we are staffed properly, that we have enough adults in the building, and that includes making it easier for parents and community members to volunteer in our school buildings. We have people that want to help, and we could use their eyes in the buildings. Um, this also, I think, means facilitating and collaborating with our business partners, you know, folks maybe who have security companies um, where they can donate equipment and we can facilitate those things. It really takes an all hands on deck approach to solve this issue. And then of course, sometimes we just need money, um, but there are grants available from the Maryland Center for School Safety at the state level, as well as schoolsafety.gov at the federal level and working with our elected. All right, thank you. And then we have last Brenda Diaz. Right, so, you know, Earlier this year or in the past year, a Kennedy High School teacher testified to the board saying that it was essentially an open air drug market. People are coming from off campus to go onto campus to buy drugs. We had a report earlier this year, this actual school year, where an elementary school teacher was, you know, arrested for allegedly selling fentanyl during school hours. So this tells us that we have a serious cultural problem with it MCPS and overall cultural issue where students and even staff feel that selling drugs and participating in some sort of violence is a low risk activity during the day. These types of activities are not fair, obviously, to our teachers and students. Teachers want to focus on being professionals and helping our students achieve. And then our students want to focus on 
learning and doing their best in the class. So we need to look at how we can prioritize safety in our community and change the culture within MCPS. So there's accountability and transparency.